you wanted to heat a small space, a tent, RV, or even something like a boat, it could potentially cost you thousands of dollars. But fortunately, a couple of patents finally ran out, and now with competition being able to jump into the game, we've got a product called a Chinese diesel heater. Now, it's not really Chinese. They're just made in China like many other products. But the real point of this is they are inexpensive, affordable, and super easy to install. Now, nothing in this video is sponsored. I'm just gonna show you the model that I bought. You need to understand what these diesel heaters really are. Surprisingly, they're very simple devices. They are a fuel tank along with a fuel pump and then a combustion unit. All they're doing is burning diesel fuel inside of a sealed combustion chamber and then it operates kind of like a heat sink. Air blows across the chamber. This model costs just over a hundred bucks, so don't expect the world with this one, but it does have a control panel on the front, but they all operate the same. They're not able to control the amount of fuel that goes into the chamber. The way you regulate the heat is the timing. That's why many diesel heaters make a ticking sound. The faster the tick means more fuel is going in the chamber. Now this particular one that I bought claims that it has a kind of tickless operation, meaning you're not gonna hear the pump. Almost all models will include the following. You'll get a stainless steel exhaust pipe along with a heat delivery tube, and that's essentially like dryer hose, except it is made of metal. You've gotta remember that the heat that comes out of this thing can be almost 400 degrees at the outlet. Most models have two outlets on the bottom. One is gonna be for the intake air that goes into the chamber. This is the air that will actually drive the combustion process and that hose will remain completely cool. The box on the end here is a kind of sound intake muffler and it has a small screen to keep out things like bugs and other pests. Now the exhaust is entirely different. This is fully stainless steel and this pipe is going to get hot. It can reach upwards of over 550 degrees. That can ignite against things like wood, fiberglass, and I'm gonna show you how I dealt with that, putting it through the wood side of my shed. And though these things do use diesel fuel to operate, you also require electricity to run the blower and electronics. Now it's not really sophisticated, but you're gonna need either a car battery or some type of 12 volt source that's usually able to output around eight amps. The tank on this model is about one gallon, and that's pretty typical. You certainly could add a larger tank if you wanted. So much for that tickless operation, but I learned later in the video, you're gonna see this unit does become silent once it's warmed up. Now the mic on this camera is pretty sensitive. They're not nearly this loud, but they do sound somewhat like an airplane engine when they're first starting up. 200 degrees. Depends where I hit it, but that is incredible. This thing's been on like three minutes. And this is the secret to why these are so popular. In three minutes, I've got air coming out that's 250 degrees from a product that's basically the size of a gas can. From here, the sky's the limit. You could operate this outside like this, put the air hose on the end, you could route it through a window inside your house if you lost your heating system, you could heat up a tent, an RV, or a boat, but many people wanna put these inside of a structure. Now, I'm not telling you you can put this in your house legally. I'm gonna show you my install on the back of this building. Now, I shared a previous video where I put a pellet stove in the front, but this back room is separate. I'm hoping to use this as a type of workshop, maybe put a small CNC machine, and I don't wanna spend big money to heat this small room. So instead, I'm gonna mount this diesel heater on the wall. Started by drilling an 8 inch hole in the side of my structure and I'm going to use this gas heating thimble. These are normally designed for double wall gas pipe but I want to have something in the way of that exhaust pipe touching the side of my structure. Now diesel heaters could be operated outside the building and I could just simply use the air exhaust into this small room but I'd like to put the heater inside so that I can use it anytime I want regardless of the weather. It's also a good idea to have one of these monoxide detectors. Now diesel heaters don't really output a lot of monoxide, but you'll still want some level of safety along with a smoke detector in case you have an issue. I'm gonna show you an experiment to see how hot these things really get and the mistakes that you can easily make. But first, I wanna get the unit mounted and I'm gonna simply use these heavy duty wall brackets and I'll affix them to the feet that are included on this diesel heater. With the unit mounted, I'm ready to move onto the exhaust and the intake lines, but I wanna show you guys this. This stuff can be super helpful. You're gonna slide it over the exhaust pipe. This is often used for exhaust pipes for generators, racing headers, and it gives you a fireproof protection and an extra level of insulation along that pipe. I also wanted to insulate the space around those pipes because of course mice are gonna come in and other pests. I'm gonna use the included muffler along with the air intake muffler, and then I can turn the device on. And it's really important that you do not repeat the mistake I'm gonna show you here. I saw many messages online that said you could use regular pipe insulation around these pipes. Now remember, the air intake pipe, the black one, stays completely cool. The exhaust has that fabric over it, so I was pretty sure this stuff would be safe. 
Now you need to think about how you're going to get that hot air around your room. Now you could use the included hose, you could put vents and go crazy if you wanted, but I'm just going to simply use the diffuser along with a very short piece of the hose. This will keep the air directly off the wall and should help circulate it around the room better. Now you do need some power to run the unit. Some guys will just use a battery along with a trickle charger. You have a ton of different options, but it will require 12 volts of power. I'm just going to use a portable power station with the cigarette plug and that should provide enough power to run the unit until I can put an outlet there with a better power supply. Now to be fair here, this room is empty, there's a huge echo and you can hear how loud that tick is, but keep watching in the video because you're going to see this unit eventually become silent. But before I got that far, all of a sudden I was smelling something so I decided to stop the unit and take a look at this insulation. Despite having that stuff all over the exhaust pipe, the insulation was still burning up. So to anyone thinking about using this stuff on a regular installation, I would not do it. You'll want to use a product like this. Now if you've got a wood stove, you might recognize this stuff. It's used in boilers. This stuff is fireproof. It's designed for ultra high heat and it is not going to burn from any type of contact with an exhaust pipe. And after running for two hours, this stuff held up perfectly. There was no burning, no smells. And I'm curious if I really need to use that exhaust muffler. I don't think it makes that much of a difference. And after a lot of trial and error, this was my final design. I used a scrap piece of double wall gas pipe. Now the edge isn't cut very cleanly, but you'll also notice the exhaust pipe is now by itself in the middle, surrounded by that same insulation. I separated the air intake. You don't really need them in the same pipe. So I put one small hole, I pointed it upward along with a muffler, that will keep rain and other stuff out. I used that same piece of double wall pipe, but I put a solid end cap on it. Then I drilled a hole and used this flange. Now many people are using this flange currently, but again, it conducts a lot of heat. Inside this pipe, it's hardly hot on the top. That makes me feel a lot safer about this installation, especially if you're gonna run it for hours on end. And here's what I learned about the muffler. I don't think you need it. It doesn't make a big difference in the sound. Now, if you've got someone right next door and a little bit more noise could make a difference, then you can certainly go ahead and adapt it to the exhaust pipe. It just sounds like a small fan running at this point and you hear no ticking at all. I don't know how they pull that off, but it's just not audible. Let's see if I put the mic right to the case if you can hear it. What about the heat? Is it any good? This thing outputs an enormous amount of heat. This room is about 14 by 14. It's got really high ceilings and no insulation. When it was 27 degrees, I turned this heater on and within a half an hour, the room temperature had already gone up almost 20 degrees. And you can regulate the speed. These Chinese products vary. They don't always have Fahrenheit. They're usually Celsius or even other types of adjustments, but they've got a high, low, medium. And once you adjust this to the low position, once you've got the temperature you want, you can run about 30 hours on just a single tank with this model. Gallon of diesel around here is about $3.20 a gallon. That is a pretty cheap way to heat your space. But I'm curious to know, what do you guys think? Do you currently own one of these diesel heaters? Have you considered one? And what are your plans for using it? And if you've got ideas about my installation, I'm certainly open to it. There is no guidebook for how you install these things beyond the manual, which is not very good. As always, if you like this video, be sure to give it a thumbs up and subscribe to the Silver Symbol channel if you want to see more videos coming up.